Welcome to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, and thank you for being a part of our television ministry. Pulaski Heights is a place of warmth and love, with an outreach mission that extends far beyond our church walls. We have a long tradition of offering our hearts, stretching our minds, and extending Christ's hands to those in need. We are a congregation of hope and an open place of worship that seeks to share the good news beyond the conventional barriers of fellowship. Hi, I'm Brent Scarta, Senior Pastor at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. It is our desire that you will be inspired by today's message of hope for a diverse community in search of God's love. Go out and serve 101 hours in some way in the church and in the community uh, to commemorate our 101st year. We want to make an impact on Little Rock, Pulaski County, and the world. I invite you to take one out, look at it. You'll have the opportunity throughout this month and early January to tear off this, uh, connect this card, place it in the offering baskets or drop it by the church and make your commitment. In January, all those commitments will go into our time capsule which will be returned to our cornerstone as we begin our 101st year. This is done in loving memory of Wynne Rockefeller for his many, many years of public service. Once again, welcome to each and, one of, each and every one of you and let's prepare our hearts and minds as we worship God through prayer. Holy One, Emmanuel, come into our hearts, guide us through this season of darkness and bring us to your light. In the name of the child of Bethlehem, and the risen one, we pray, amen.
Isaiah 60, verses 2 through 3. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, Emmanuel. In celebration of our Christian hope, let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Please be seated. I want to invite the children to join me at the front as we sing together. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Advent. Look around you. It's changed in here. You see the decorations, the wreaths, the uh, Advent wreath, that's the, the circle of greenery with, with candles in it. The, the banners have changed. This is the season of Advent, and this is the season that we wait and watch and prepare for the celebration of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem on Christmas Day. Do you know how many days? There are till Christmas, 23, just over three. I mean, yeah, it's almost here. We are running to get to the end. You know what, I, you know what the best part of Christmas is for me, the celebration of Christmas? It's about gift giving. Do you like to give gifts? Do you like to receive gifts? I'll bet you do, yeah. I'm doing all my shopping right now. I'm working on all of that, pulling it together. Have you done all your Christmas shopping yet? You have all your presents? Could I help you do your shopping? I've got a great idea for you. Instead of buying something this year, why don't you think about doing something for someone? Like uh, writing a letter to your grandparents and tell them how much they mean to you. Or, or writing a letter to someone who, who may not have anyone to celebrate Christmas with. Or helping some of your friends at school. Or, or doing something good for your mom and dad, okay? Would you, would you do that? I want you to come back and tell me about it later, okay? We have a chance at Pulaski Heights to do that kind of thing. We have a 100 plus 1 centennial service initiative. And we're asking every member of the church, that includes your families, to make a commitment to serve 101 hours in 2013 to celebrate our 101st year, to, to work in the church, work in the community, work around the straight state, go overseas, go to Guatemala, whatever. We want you to offer some service. You know what we're going to do? We're going to come back. Maybe today some people are ready to sign this commitment, but we're going to ask everybody to look at this commitment card and you can go to our website on the back and every week get different tips on things that you can do. Isn't that great? It's really cool. It's very, very advanced. Are you ready for this? And then they just come back and tear off this little card. It's a commitment card to service. Put name and address and just drop it in the offering basket or bring it by the office. 
And then in January, we're going to pray over these, and we're going to put them in our time capsule, and we're going to put them right out underneath the church in the cornerstone. Does that sound pretty cool? I think it does. Will all of you make a commitment? Say yes. Raise your hands. Yes, yes. Raise your hand. Yes. And now how about all of you out there? Raise your hands. I'm getting somewhere. Wonderful. Well, let's have a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this season and for the joy it brings and for the hope it brings in our lives. We pray that we would be Jesus for others, that we would give ourselves in this coming year, that we might make a difference for everyone. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. See you later. you let us pray God of this holy season as we look toward the coming of Christmas we pray that you would help us to ready our hearts and minds to ponder the deeper things point us past the commercialism of the season toward the true miracle of your son bending low to enter our world Guide us to the hope that he brings. Help us to share in the joy of serving your people in his name. This day, O oh God, we remember those who are suffering from loss in this season. We extend Christian sympathy to the family and friends of Helen Duckworth in her recent death, and to Tom, Robert, and Thomas Cole, in the death of their mother and grandmother, Glenna Cole. We pray for healing to come to those who have been hospitalized recently. Anna Albritton, Robin Badley, Bethany Barber, Susan Barham, Virginia Codgill, Terry Dennis, Dee Dietz, Lori French, Vadina Lunsford, Jesslyn McCleary, Mary Lee McHenry, Rosalind St. John, Dorothy Sawatsky, Linda Siebold, and Amy Smith. And Lord, we rejoice in the birth of children to our church family. We rejoice in the birth of Victoria Vidrine Bergen, the child of Julie and Corey Bergen, and Andrew McNeil Albritton II, the child of Anna and Drew Albritton, and the grandchild of Marcia and Jim Albritton. We're thankful for the honor of getting to be a part of the lives of our new members, Jim and Lida Campbell, and Patrick and Lindsay Falke. And we pray that you would help us to be a good and faithful church family to the little ones who are baptized in our congregation, Madison Grace McCulley, the child of Brooke and Chip McCulley, and Kennedy Jane Peake, the child of Katie and Hamilton Peake. And God, we pray that in all of our life together as a community of faith, that all we do would glorify you and would please you and would help people to know you and to serve you and to find transformation through the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You are invited to stand for the reading of the scripture, which is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 58 in the New Testament. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. 
in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body, we must put on imperishability. And this mortal body, we must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the word of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor, in your works, is not in vain. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Ever since the ghost of Christmas present, directed the attention of Ebenezer Scrooge to that vacant seat in the chimney corner, the empty chair, the empty chair has been a symbol of loss and grief for the death of loved ones. While death is a natural part of life, it, it happens to all of us, while it's a natural part of life, facing the death of a loved one, feels anything but natural. It's very, very hard. Especially, especially this time of year. It's, it's like traveling to a foreign country with, without a, a tour guide or, or a command of the language or, or a knowledge of, of the culture. <coughs> especially in this holiday season when memories come bubbling forth. Christmas will never be the same again. There will always be an empty chair at the table. We'll miss his laugh, laughter. We'll, we'll miss her smile. The late anthropologist Margaret Mead said, when, when a person is born, we rejoice. When that person is married, we are jubilant. But when they die, we try to pretend that nothing has happened. We don't know how to deal with death. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. One day, the, the one we love most is, is seated in the recliner next to us. The next day, that individual is gone, dead, no longer present. But the relationship's not over. The relationship is as strong as ever. As a matter of fact, Following death, often our feelings toward our loved one intensify. They become even greater. This past week, I intentionally took stock of the empty chairs in my home. Literal chairs that once belonged to long now dead family members. The child's rocker that was given to my grandfather at his birth in the year 1900 the straight chairs that once graced the kitchen table of my grandmother 50, 60, 70 years ago. My great-great-grandfather's Morris chair dating to 1891. And my great-great-grandmother's rocker that was personally crafted for her at a plantation in South Arkansas in the year 1848. Those chairs are around us. So what do we do? What do we do with these empty chairs in our lives that, that continue to accumulate, especially those that are most recently vacated, those that are, are the most painful? How do we deal with the grief? We go through it. 
We just go through it. We allow it to flood over us. We uh, allow ourselves to feel it, to, to grieve, to suffer, to, to, to feel every last bit of it. We allow it to come to us in those various stages of grief. Denial, anger, guilt, and ultimately acceptance and, and even hope. It's possible it's possible to delay our grief, to, to hide it away in our hearts or in our, our heads, but, but eventually it's going to come bubbling forth. It, it's got to come out in some way. When my father died almost 35 years ago, I didn't have time to grieve. I was young, I was married, I had a newborn baby, there were funeral arrangements to be made, a crisis to be dealt with, and so I let it go. But two months after my father's death, my dog died, and that became a catalyst. The floodgates opened, and all that grief and all that, that sense of loss began to flow out of me. It, it was just there, and I, I found myself a grown man sitting on the ground in my backyard sobbing over that dog's grave for what felt like an eternity. It was just there. Grief is real and it's intense, and it hurts, and it hurts. The most critical thing I think we need to know, however, about empty chairs and the grief that we all face in our lives has nothing to do with the psychology of grief. Rather, it has everything to do with the theology of the resurrection. Lo, I tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For this imperishable body must put on imperishability and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Here's the harsh truth of it all. We're going to die. You and I will die. We can join the gym. We can pump iron. We can uh, get our daily intake of fiber. We can rest. But sooner or later, we will die. And in that moment, we will leave behind our lazy boy recliners and our sofas and our swivel back computer desk chairs and our chaise lounges. We'll leave them behind and we'll leave behind these perishable bodies and we will put on the imperishable and we will meet our maker. That's it. That's what you need to know. That's the good news. This is what we hang our hats on. This is our hope as believers of Christ. It's about Jesus the Christ. It's about his miraculous birth. It's about his life. It's about his death. It's about his glorious resurrection. That's it. I know. I know for, for some of you, this is a, a bitter pill to swallow. For, for erudite, sophisticated, 21st century Christians, I know it's tough. Famed, famed atheist Richard Dawkins has said that the resurrection is totally incompatible with sophisticated science. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, Dawkins says, is petty, it's small, it's trivial, it's local, it's earthbound, it's not worthy of the universe. And in many ways, Dawkins is correct because the resurrection is local. It is earthbound. And that's precisely why it's so powerful and meaningful. It happened in human history. It happened for us and with us. It, it shapes our lives and everything we do, this, this wonderful gift. I had a, a father who lost his son. A, a member of my church once asked me the question, Brett, so do you really believe in this resurrection business? And I responded like this. I said, yes, I do. Why in the world do you think I would have left behind a lucrative career to 
enroll in a graduate school of religion for three years to get an advanced degree so I could take a cut and pay and experience long and grueling hours. Yes, I believe in the resurrection. I believe in it. Lo, I tell you a mystery. I love the way the Apostle Paul says it in, in the King James Version of the Bible. The NRV. The NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, simply says, listen, I tell you a mystery. But it doesn't have the same ring, does it? Lo, I tell you a mystery. It's filled with anticipation and wonder and excitement and surprise. It's right there with us. Lo, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Luke 2, verse 9, the Christmas story, the story of the angels. I mean, look, if the angels, if the angels could experience excitement and wonder and surprise and perhaps even a little fear at the birth of the Christ child, can't we feel wonder, excitement, surprise, and even a little fear at the resurrection of the risen Lord? And here's the good news in all of this. You don't have to wait till you're dead to experience the resurrection. You can experience it now, today. You can fill all those empty chairs that exist in your life. I mean, Ebenezer Scrooge didn't allow Tiny Tim's chair to go empty. He, woke, he awoke from his nightmare. He mended his ways. And he brought healing to the life of Tiny Tim and and the entire Cratchit family. Look around you this morning. Look around you. Do you see any empty chairs? Empty seats? Empty spaces in the pews? Think about it. Who belongs there beside you? Who should be here? Who's not witnessing this? Who is not experiencing this great truth of the resurrection? Who doesn't know this, this wonderful thing? Think of them, go out, get them, bring them in, drag them, kicking and screaming if you must, because they need to hear. Now take out this, this 100 plus one commitment card. Take it out, I'm telling you right now. Take it out, pick it up. I'm not seeing you move. Pick it up and hold it in your hand. Do you know how many empty lives you could fill by simply giving a bit of your time a little bit of your time to read to an elderly person, to serve in a food bank, to take a bouquet of flowers to your neighbor. You see? So make a commitment. Sign this. Today, tomorrow, next week, but don't delay and go out and change the world. And today, today when you come to this table to eat this bread and drink this cup, Give thanks. Give thanks for this miraculous God who continues to fill the empty places in our lives. In life, in death, and in life beyond death. Thanks be to God.
I'm Joe Fox, and I have the happy task of representing the music ministry of Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church in a wonderful announcement. Last year, we produced, the music ministry produced a CD, a Christmas CD, in order to raise funds for special projects and missions. And since that time, we learned of a need from our friends at the wonderful choir, Philander Smith College University. And they need some choir robes. And with our funds and with a significant matching funds from the United Methodist Foundation, Jim Argue, our own Jim Argue director, I'm happy to, and pleased to announce today that we will, with the United Methodist Foundation, provide those robes for the Philander Smith Choir. I think uh, Jeff Parker, director. Their ministry is a wonderful ministry also, and we support them in their endeavors, and we are so happy to do this. And with that note, please know that Sing We Now for Christmas, the Christmas CD is on sale to the door to your right. Thank you. As our ushers come forward to collect this morning's offering, I want to share with you that we are still welcoming your commitment cards for our stewardship campaign. It's not about me. Uh, they are available in the pews. If you uh, have not had a chance to turn one in, I hope that you will do so today, along with your Connect cards and your morning offering. Let us pray. God, we thank you that we get to make a difference in the world through your guidance and through the gifts that you have given us. Bless what we put before you today, O oh God. Consecrate it for your service, as we pray you would help us to consecrate our lives to your glory. In the name of Christ the Lord and in the power of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their ending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is Jesus Christ in whom your word became flesh and came to dwell among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you destroyed the power of sin and death. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord gathered with his disciples and there in a place apart he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that in unity we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by Christ's blood. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we receive this sign of God's eternal love for us through the sacrament of Holy Communion. And we do it by receiving this sacrament. With, through the method of intinction by coming by the center aisles holding our hands outstretched having the bread placed into our hands and then dipping it into the cup this morning there are four stations with intinction there are also two gluten-free stations on either side for those who prefer to receive by this method in the United Methodist tradition the table belongs to Christ and Christ is the host and Christ always invites his children to come and so the table is open you're all invited Everything is prepared. We invite you now to come.
in this season where the days grow shorter and we anticipate and seek light in the world, there are those who experience grief and pain and suffering every day. And as the church of Jesus Christ, we are called to bring light and hope and love and promise into those lives. And that's the business of this congregation. Has been for 100 years and will be for the next 100 years. We invite you to be a part of our ministry at Pulaski Heights. Uh, if you would like to know more about it, our pastors would love to discuss it with you. We'd like to invite you to attend one of our membership classes coming up in January uh, and to experience the wonderful part of this faith community of, of really making it not about ourselves but going beyond the walls. We would receive you as we stand now to sing our closing hymn. Please be seated. If you are a first time guest today at Pulaski Heights, then we want to thank you by giving you a gift as you exit this sanctuary. It's a coffee mug filled with information about the ministries of this congregation. Receive it as a gift of love from us and to you. Uh, the Reverend Aubrietta Jones will be our staff host today. Aubrietta will come to the front uh, at following the benediction and the choral response and uh, greet you and answer any questions you may have about the ministries of Pulaski Heights. I invite you to remain seated through the benediction and the benediction response. So go this day to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. May the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit move in you in this season. Thank you for joining us today at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. And I hope you enjoyed our worship service. May the peace, joy, and love of God be with you.